everyone, this is Dave Castagno with Screamer Magazine and Radio Screamer here at the 2012 NAMM show. And I have lucked out to get one of the biggest names on the planet right now. See there. Guys, welcome. Hi. What's up, man? How's it going? It's going great. Hey, um, how many conventions have you been to? NAMMs. Um, a couple, uh, I, I, I don't really know the count exactly, I, I, I tend not to remember them most of the time. Um, I guess I have a bit of a reputation for getting extremely violently drunk at a lot of these things, so, um, but it's always fun, you know, you know I think everyone always has a really fun time here. And Sean, do you, uh, what do you make of this? You enjoy these type of events? Uh, it's a little crazy, man. It's a, it's a lot of people, and it's it's it's. I'm not a big uh, hang out in a crowd kind of guy, so it's it's a little claustrophobic for me. But it's not bad. It's fun. It's like you know, it's good to meet people and hang out and um, have a couple free drinks. So it's always good. Now you guys are road dogs. I, I looked at your upcoming tour schedule. That is brutal. Do you enjoy that much time on the road? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, that's what we do, you know, that's, that's why you start a band in the first place, you know, as a kid, you know, you, you want to play, you want to uh, play shows, you know, uh, you know, the, the, the traveling side of it's fun too, you know, um, getting to see cool places, you know, meet people and um, it's it's just fun, you know, that's what we do and it's, it's a necessity as well nowadays, you know, it's not like anyone's selling albums or anything like that anymore, so you really have to get out there and, you know, uh, get your name out there and, and hopefully, you know, sort of uh, convince people, you know, to like your band by, by actually having them see you, so, um, but yeah, you know, we, we're not against that, we, we enjoy touring, you know, it's a fun, fun part for us. So tell us about the next tour, this is, is this going to be the biggest tour you've been on, this next, this next leg? Um, well, first, we're just in Europe and we're going to countries we haven't been to before. We're doing Australia, New Zealand, um, um, and then after that, we, we hook up with Three Doors Down in Europe and we finish the tour with them. Then we come back and we do a, a Nickelback tour in uh, from April through July, uh, June, I think. So, you know, the, the, so far it's a good year. It's a good start to the year. It's real busy and we like to be busy. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, you know, we just we just like to tour and, and it's been, it, it, you know, last year was kind of a slow year for us as far as touring goes, so it feels it's good to be productive again and to be out on the road and actually doing, you know, two, three hundred shows a year. Have you guys been to Russia before? No, so I'm going to do my best not to get arrested. <laughs> <laughs> that might prove to be a challenge. Um, so you guys have been out uh, supporting the new record, the last record. Um, Four years just about between the prior one and the most recent one. Um, was that due to touring? Yeah, I mean, you spend two years touring. So in, in those two years, it, it, you don't really have much time to write. And we find that we have some ideas, but usually it's best when you when you take some time off and after you finish touring, take three or four months off, then get into a room together. Uh, give me some time to get some ideas together. And the guys, we all get together in a room and we, and we jam and see what comes out. And this one, you know, we felt good about the stuff we had, but we felt like we didn't have strong enough songs by the end of December 2009. Uh, so we spent more time, most of 2010 was writing and recording and, and, uh, and uh, you know, trying to finish it up. Uh, we, Brendan O'Brien was really instrumental in making us make the songs as good as we possibly could. And so by the time the album was done early last year, uh, we felt good about it. And it, it, takes, it took longer than we, we'd hoped for it to take, but um, sometimes you need to do that to make sure you have the right songs. And then it's not going to come out and just be an album for the sake of being an album, you know. And you recorded that in Nashville, correct? Yeah, we went down to Nashville and spent a month there. Actually, I think out of out of the year and a half we, we took to write the album and record it, we were probably down in Nashville for about six months at that time. So uh, we got to see a couple season changes, and uh, we kept going in and doing some some stuff, and then going back home for a few weeks, and then going back into Nashville. So it was a little it was a stilted process, but um, sometimes it's it's best to break it up and, and sort of you know take a breather, come back in with a fresh mind, and and sort of be, uh, attack it from a different angle and see what happens. Yeah. Sean, I think if you could get through a year and a half in Nashville without getting arrested, you'll do fine in Russia. Well, I don't know. I've, I've heard bad things about Russian prisons. I've watched that show, Locked Up Abroad. So, you know, and we're going to be in Thailand as well. So I think for the three days in Thailand, I'm just going to try and not get arrested as well. Well, I, th I think I'm going to end up in the, in the Thai prison, and he's going to end up in the Russian prison. <laughs> and Caesar's going to just, uh, well, I don't know. Okay, I'm, I'm going to see if I can con him into, like, buying him a ladyboy hooker without him knowing. <laughs> um, ID 
ideally, uh, if there was, you know, in a perfect world, you know, how often would you like to come out with a record? I mean, four years, it's a long, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a long gap, but I, you do have to support it. Um, in a perfect world, I mean, what, what do you think uh, would be your preferred time? I think, you know, every two years would be good. You know, do a year, year and a half with the touring, take six months off, and then and hopefully have enough material for a new album. Um, I think what also, if you tour for longer than that, you start burning out. So you get to a point where it's like, man, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I, I don't want to see a guitar. I don't want to play a guitar. Uh, as far as songwriting goes, you can stick it. Uh, so I feel like if, if, if you tour smarter and you take, you know, you, 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 you tour bigger, if you, if you tour the right markets at the right time and don't oversaturate yourself in, you know, going back to the same place six or seven times in a, in a year's circuit, uh, you know, it, it would make more sense. So I feel like maybe on this one, you know, we'll tour this year and then we'll, we'll, we'll do the next album. I don't feel like it's necessary to, to do, we've already toured a year almost on this album and we have another year up ahead of us. So I feel like that's 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 almost two years again and it's it's, it's a good, you know, so we started in March of, of last year. So just, we'll, we'll, stop, we'll stop just shy of two years and then we'll, we'll go in and start working again. And I feel like you need that because you don't want to get off the road and be burnt off and pissed off and not want to play music anymore because it's just not conducive to a good writing environment. How has the uh, your live audience reaction been to the to the latest record? It's been good. It's you know it's it's we played some weird shows and some weird tours that, that we were sort of not quite as metal as the rest of the band. So it was different. It, it, we, obviously, it was our fans that were out there to see us, and then there's a very big mixture of fans. But I think the best response is obviously are, are when you're at your own shows and people come to see you play, and then and then, and then they get excited about the songs that you have to play for them. So. Um, then they also know the songs that aren't singles, and so you can play sort of deeper album tracks, if you will. Um, but it's been a great response. I mean, it's every every time the song hits the radio, it takes a little while, and then it gets, you know, after about two or three months, it gains momentum, and then you start seeing a, a, like a really positive crowd response. So looking at your, your upcoming itinerary, is there one place in particular that you're really looking forward to playing? Uh, yeah, I think the places we haven't played uh, are the most exciting for us. Um, I think Thailand's going to be great, uh, Russia, you know, and I think playing there as well as just, you know, seeing the countries and, you know, experiencing it for the first time. But uh, it's exciting because you don't know what to expect, you know. Uh, we might have a, a really good response or it might not be so good, but um, either way, you know, it's, it's something we want to concentrate more on is, you know, going, you know, going overseas because uh, it's something we, we've kind of neglected in the past a little bit. and. Uh, you know, we get, you know, fans on the internet and, you know, all over, always, you know, oh, come here, come here, you know, um, asking us to go to places, you know, sometimes places we haven't been or, oh, come back here, you haven't been here in, you know, five, six years, so. Um, Have you been to Brazil? You know, no, never, and that's one of the places that, you know, on Facebook, there's always kids. You know, we have a, an unofficial street team there. I mean, there, there's a really good following down there. So it's that's also something in um, you know, sort of down the line that we, we'd like to, you know, one of our goals, I guess, is to to do a South American tour as well. So that that's something we, you know, we're starting to sort of speak about. But um, but yeah, it's uh, it's fun. You know, it's uh, it's 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 fun to it's fun to travel. <laughs> Well, guys, um, Dale and Sean, I just want to thank you both for your time. I, I really appreciate it. I want to wish you continued success. Uh, looking forward to seeing you when you're here at the Staples Center. That's huge. What's the largest place you've played so far, number of people? Um, yeah, we, we played outdoor festivals, but I think my favorite place that we played, we, we, we opened for Audio Slave in 2005 and we got to play a sold out Madison Square Garden with them. So it wasn't like it was our show, but we can say we played the, the garden. Um, and any, you know, the Nickelback tour is going to be great. There's huge venues, and, and we hope to get to that point where we can do those kinds of shows on our own. But, you know, right now it's fun for us to sort of ride their coattails, you know. <laughs> and and uh, they, they're willing to take us out for some reason, and we go and have a good time. And so, yeah, I mean, I think we've, you know, we've done festivals where it's like, you know, 50 to 100,000 people in, in Europe especially. And um, those are great. They're, they're intimidating. But I think so are the, the smaller gigs. It's like, I think every show has its own energy and its own sort of intimidation factor. But we're excited to come back, man. We, we, we hardly ever play in California, let alone L.A. And so to play at the Staples Center, that's going to be great. Uh, do you guys still get butterflies? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what we have to drink before we play. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you.